Hey everyone and welcome to our short video on the high yield digoxin mechanism of action. Let's get started. Did you know that digoxin is actually extracted from the leaves of a plant? And guess what the name of the plant is? Lanata digitalis. Now the name makes sense, right? Alright, so what is the main effect of digoxin? It basically increases contractility. It's a positive inotropic agent, increases stroke volume, increases heart rate. Now we use most commonly digoxin in the heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. But more on the heart failures, both diastolic and systolic, you can find in our comprehensive heart failure videos, which I strongly recommend for you to watch. Alright, so let's see now how the digoxin actually works. Here what I have drawn is the cardiac myocyte, alright? And here on the circulum of the cardiac myocyte we have two pumps. The first one is energy dependent, it's called sodium potassium ATPase. The main function is to put potassium ions inside the cell and to bring out the sodium ions. And the second pump is called sodium calcium exchanger. It uh, doesn't require any, any energy and it can move sodium and calcium ions in both directions but the main function is to bring in sodium ions and bring out calcium, calcium ions. Alright, so digoxin, the mechanism of action is the following. Basically digoxin comes and blocks the sodium potassium ATPase. Now if you block this pump, what is going to happen with here with the intracellular ion concentration of sodium? It will increase, right? Exactly. So sodium here will increase because normally this pump puts out the sodium. If it doesn't work, the sodium will stay in. Alright, as an as a effect, as a result of this, what's going to happen with here with this exchanger? It's going to stop working, right? Because it doesn't have to put more sodium inside the cell because there is already too much sodium inside the cell. So what is going to happen is that it's going to stop working and the calcium ions which are supposed to be brought out of the cell will also increase intracellularly. Alright, so Digoxin blocks the sodium potassium ATPase. As a result, the sodium ions concentration intracellularly increases. As a result, the calcium ion concentration intracellularly increases. And as a side effect, what is going to happen is that this increased calcium concentration will cause more release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmatic reticulum inside the cardiac myocyte. Now here from the sarcoplasmatic reticulum more calcium is going to spill out and this calcium will bind to troponin C which will lead to eventual cardiac myocyte contraction. But more on the exact mechanism of cardiac contraction, cardiac muscle contraction, you can find in our action potential video. Let's go over the most common side effects of digoxin as they're very heavily tested across all steps. Alright, so the cardiac side effects, the most common one is premature ventricular contractions. We can also see ventricular tachycardia and AV blocks or ventricular tachy and AV blocks on their own as well as ventricular fibrillation. Now don't forget here that the digoxin due to unknown reasons actually activates the parasympathetic nervous system and by doing so it will decrease the firing from the sinoatrial node. It will also decrease the conduction velocity of the electrical impulses through the AV node which is called dromotropic effect. So basically it has negative dromotropic effect. Alright, so now in the GI uh, side effects, we, the most common ones are anorexia, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, etc. Now we have also vision changes with digoxin use. The most common one is basically uh, yellow colored vision which is called xanthopsia. We can also see diplopia, photophobia and scotomas and even blindness by the way. And from the neurological side effects the most common ones are lethargy, fatigue, delirium and confusion. Let's talk quickly about hypokalemia and hyperkalemia with digoxin use. Now as we said this is our cardiac myocyte and this is our ATPase pump. The ATPase pump what it normally does it, it puts inside the cell potassium ions and it brings out the sodium ions. If it doesn't work you're gonna end up with hyper Kylemia. So these potassium ions won't be able to be brought inside the cell and will stay outside. So this hyperkalemia 
can lead to arrhythmias. Now, on the other hand, if you have hypokalemia and you use digoxin, this will increase the digoxin toxicity. Why? Because digoxin and potassium compete for the same place on this ATPase pump. So if you have less potassium, more digoxin will be able to bind to this pump and block it. And by the way, this is reversible inhibition of the pump. It's not irreversible. And lastly, I would like to talk about digoxin drug drug interactions as they're very heavily tested and very important for you to know. So for example, if you use amiodarone and digoxin concomitantly, for example, to treat arrhythmia, you can end up with increased digoxin levels. Now what amiodarone does is it blocks the big lycoprotein mediated elimination of digoxin from the intestinal enterocytes, from the biliary canaliculer membranes and from the renal tubular cells. Apart from that, when the concentration of amiodarone increases, the serum concentration of digoxin will increase because this increased serum, serum amiodarone concentration will change the tissue distribution of digoxin. Apart from that, quinidine, verapamil and propofenol will also increase the digoxin levels. So make sure you remember those drugs. Also, apart from that, we have an antidote from digoxin in case of digoxin toxicity. It's called DigFab. Basically, it's an antibody against digoxin. And this concludes our digoxin video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked it. Feel free to check out our other videos on our YouTube channel because they're very, very high yield, super interesting and full of integration. Thank you again so much and see you on the next video.